Get more ways to play on every sport. Baseball, golf, and Canadian football are still in full swing. The action starts at Sports Interaction, Canada Sportsbook. Bet before the game starts, live in play, or on one of our many prop bets. Doing it right since 1997, Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Join now and see all sports betting has to offer. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. That's sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. 19 plus, please play responsibly. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the GMs who made some moves over the last how many days. Kent Hughes, we kind of touched off on it a little bit with the fact that he was able to get Uri Slavkovsky first overall, and they trade for Kirby Doc. Like, a lot of people in Montreal are still trying to make sense of all of it. A lot of people are wondering if Shane Wright should have been the pick. People are wondering if he actually stared down the Canadiens' management after he got picked. Oh, he's not going to be a Montreal Canadian, at least for the foreseeable future. They have decided to go with the scoring winger and Kirby Doc potentially as a future number two or number three center for the Montreal Canadiens. What did you think of all those moves? Well, look, I'm not a prospect expert, and I don't even want to pretend for a moment I am. So I don't have a strong Neither opinion. Neither of us are. But I don't have a strong opinion on the pick. Uh, I do think clearly that if you think Slavkovsky is going to be the best talent in the draft, you take him. And there's still kind of a nod to the positional requirements of the organization to then be able to go get Kirby Doc. And, and what I like about it, at least on, on paper, is Kirby Doc is going to be in the same generation of what they're hoping for, you know, the Cole Caulfields, the, the, the Nick Suzuki's, the next players that the Canadians want to build around, you know, he's in the right age band. And I think that's important because his career is not taken off maybe the way the Blackhawks had, had hoped, you know, he's had some injury issues. There's, there's, you know, it's been a pandemic. Like there's a lot of stuff that's gone on. Um, but, you know, I think it was a creative way to, to sort of quote unquote address the problem or the need. And 100%, if you're scouts, if you do your due diligence, like I don't, I don't think you draft for positional need at the top of the draft. You, you have to come out with the best player full stop. I don't care if he plays wing. You know, it does address another need that I didn't see a ton of people talk about. Like the Canadians need some size. And, you know, Yuri Slavkovsky might not play center, but he's big. And I think that that is, is worth something. I know that sometimes drafting for size has led teams down the wrong directions. But in, in general, you go with the best guy. That's what they did. And they still found a way to get their center. So I think it's it, it's logical, the decisions they made. But, you know, you're still betting on kids. You're still betting on young men in the case of Kirby Doc. And so I don't know if it's all going to turn out great or not yet. But but I, I the process there appears to have been, you know, worth worth celebrating or worth saying, hey, these guys did the right thing. Yeah. And then another reason why a lot of people are talking about it, I should have mentioned him off top too, the Canadians end up parting with Alexander Romanov, another young defenseman, a puck moving defenseman uh, who goes off to the New York Islanders as a result of all the hustling and the bustling that goes around. So this is a really interesting time with this team as they're already in this transitional period and going into a new era. But it, it, it just made the events at least very interesting to process. I'm not a prospects guy either. I if the Canadians think Yuri Slavkovsky is the guy, he will have to prove it to them. And at least the way he reacted to everybody either giving him praise or kind of booing him or doing like the hoes, he seemed to have taken that move in stride. But I mean, I, th I think you kind of need that attitude to, to kind of be in this city. And I think that's what stuck out to me most is the fact that he's taken that in stride. Well, he's a big personality. Like I think Canadians fans are going to fall in love with this guy. Um, you know, whether he turns out to be the absolute best player in this draft, I mean, we're going to need five to 10 years to evaluate that. But just off the hop, I mean, he scores goals, he produces wow moments, and he's a giant lovable kid, it seems like. So I I think that that it's it's going to be a player that the Canadians fans are going to rally around. I mean, I, I look, I saw you were in the ring too, Julian. I mean, there's lots of people with Shane Wright signs and T-shirts, so that I'm sure Canadians fans would have loved him as well. And, and you know, maybe this will all work out quite well. I think Shane Wright, you, you don't like dropping the way he did. I'm sure that was like a long 15 minutes of time to, to sit through those other picks. But, you know, he ends up in a franchise run by Ron Francis, one of the best two-way centermen in NHL history, team that already has Matty Veneers to, to play up the middle, I mean, Seattle might end up might being a blessing in disguise for Shane Wright in terms of his fit there and who he's around and, and all those things. I mean, these things do tend to work out. 
Um, but I'm excited to see Slavkovsky in Montreal. And I, and I think he'll play next year. Uh, you know, from all indications, he's, you know, he's played with men already over in Europe. We, we saw what he did at the Olympics and the, the men's world hockey championship in May, you know, he, he's proven that he can, can make an impact in those types of games. And so he's probably ready to jump in. And, and I think where Montreal is going to be at in terms of not, you know, being a high, high competitive team next season, um, we're going to get to watch him right away. And I think he's going to score some, some goals that bring you out of your seats. I think that that that's worth something. I mean, that, that's kind of part of the debate here, right? I think Shane Wright seems to be the sort of player that is very conscientious two-way player, maybe does a lot of things that, that don't necessarily generate excitement, but help teams win games. Um, you know, Slavkovsky appears to be a bit more of a showman, a bit more of a wow moment kind of guy, um, someone you can sell and someone who also does things that help you can win games because ultimately scoring is, the hardest thing to do in the sport. And if you really think about it in the DNA of the Montreal Canadiens, it's about scoring goals and, and, and having that showy flair attitude. And it has been missing. It's been lacking for the better part of a decade plus. Well, I mean, their, their team has been built around Carey Price in a lot of ways. Right. And, and the blue line, I know PK Subban brought a certain flair, you know, and, and, you know, but ultimately what has betrayed this team when it's, you know, if you look at its most recent incarnations that were good and I'm, I almost am excluding that 2021 run to the cup because it's just like there's some weirdness there. But like in the in the middle part of the 2010s, the Canadians were consistently a good team. They won lots of playoff rounds. They got to an Eastern Conference final. It, it, it felt like in the big moments, they didn't score enough quite to get over the hump. Right. Um, when, and, you know, especially the points when Carey Price was healthy and, you know, the best goaltender in the game or one of the best goaltenders in the game just felt like they didn't have enough offense. Well, maybe this this next generation will be built a little different way because, Cole Caulfield scores goals. Um, there's still going to be more players added to, to this team through their rebuild. And, you know, I think it's going to be probably built in a different manner. I think they're going to be exciting is, is what they're hoping to be. And you need some lottery luck for that too. And, and so I think the 2023 draft pick for the Canadians is going to be important. Um, you know, they remember they got an additional unprotected 2023 pick first rounder from, from Florida and that deal for, for Ben Chirot. And so the, 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 the cupboard is just starting to be restocked and, who knows? Maybe next year they're picking first again, and uh, then you're going to have a really fun, exciting uh, offensive team.